Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Man, it's good to see you all in the house of the Lord. I don't know if you noticed this morning, but I did. I noticed this morning. You remember Ray? He's here. He's here this morning. He was in the nursing home, not doing well. We thought we were going to lose Ray, and he's here this morning. Thank you, Jesus, right? Praise the Lord. It's good to have you with us this morning, Ray. We love you, buddy. We love you. So, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is, the, this is kind of the wrap-up of VBS a little bit. Kids are going to do two songs. Yay! Afton tried to talk me into three, but we're only going to do two. Yeah, I do love Jesus, but you're, yeah, you're, I do. But I don't know if we're doing that one or not, but. <laughs> I know you told me. But hey, I want to welcome you guys all here. It's great to have you with us this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. No, the kids are great. You make all the noise you want as we sing. You can dance around if you want. Tyler's got some ja dancing music we got going on. Hey, I want to welcome you again. You on Facebook Live. Great to have you join us this morning. We love you. We're praying for you. May God bless you. Cat. Good morning. Today's call to worship comes from Psalms 100, 1 through 3. Shout for joy of the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for bringing us together this morning. It is so wonderful to see some old faces, some new faces, the children from VBS. It is such an amazing fe feeling to know that they are drawn to you, Lord, and we just want to give them the best worship that we can for you. So be with us as we bring them worship this morning. Be with Pastor Tom as he brings the message, and be with the kids as they get up here, and they're brave, and they sing your songs with praise, and they just bring that joy of that young hunger for you, Lord. We love you so much in all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stand with us.
together we sing.
God, right? Aren't you glad that you're attached to him? Yeah. I know I am. You can be seated real quick. We'll get up here in just another minute, though. You get your exercise this morning up and down, up and down, right? Hey, again, great to see everybody here. We've got a few announcements for you tonight. Is our baptism service at the Dunkirk Pool. That's at 6 o'clock. Bring snacks. We'll have snacks there, obviously. But bring some snacks with you if you want to, some finger foods. And, I, and, you know, this is Pastor Tom's definition of finger foods. Anything you can eat with your fingers. Yeah. I've been known to eat steak. <laughs> I've been known to eat a lot of things with my fingers. So, it's really, not, it's really not limited to much of anything. You can have a steak tonight at the... Okay. So, if you bring whatever you want to bring, some snacks, um, whatever, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe I could talk Sheila into making me a snack steak before we come. I don't know. Anyways, that's tonight at 6 o'clock. Um, the baptism service will, will be at like 6.15. And then after that is over with, we, we, we got quite a few people being baptized. But after that's over with, we'll just be able to be at the pool and swim and have a good time together as a church body, okay? All right. Board meeting, August 8th, next Sunday afternoon, 4.30. Board, be here for that meeting. All right, um, it's a very important one. I'm just trying to get some more information from Pastor Tim. So we'll be voting on whether or not we're going to be doing the olive branch thing. So we'll be just prepared for that, okay? And um, we need five by seven picture frames by August 29th. Oh, that's for Pastor Gloria. I was like, what? Why do we need those for? But okay, we need those. So bring them by by August 29th. Oh, I know what for. Never mind, I know what for. And family pictures. Make them cute too. Like kids hanging on the wall or something. August 29th is our hog roast. We got Water and DeWine coming to join us again. Remember that group from last year? They're going to be with us again. It'll be great. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. Jason's already going to have the hog, ro the ro the hog already roasted up. He's already, he practiced on Colt yesterday. So he practiced there, so he's going to perfect it for us. Okay, well, it's going to be more delicious next on the 29th. So there. So come on out for that. Everybody's invited. The whole community's invited. If you say, well, Pastor Tom, I'm, I, this is my first Sunday I've ever been here. That's okay. Yeah. Your first Sunday is the beginning of your relationship with our church. And it's not, 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 not now you came the first time, you're part of us, so just know that. It'll be in the back of the church. Just in the back of the church here, come here. We'll have the tents up. Bob and I need to go get another tent. But the tents will be up. Well, let me forget that. Yeah. No, no, we're going to get a big canopy. Nice. We can use that too. So take note of that. It's going to be a great day, a great, great day. Um, women's um, conference is coming up October 15th to the 16th. Um, money needs to be in by September 1st, so you've got a month to get that in. Today's, can you believe today's August? August 1st. Kid, my sister-in-law goes back to school Thursday. She's a teacher. Believe that or not. Sorry, kids. What are you going to do? So, see Pastor Gloria, get that money in by September 1st. So we can get, it would be a guy, I used to have a great group of ladies go to this, wouldn't it? It's up in Ship Shawana. You guys, you guys can go shopping afterwards. I won't be there, so she will be happy about that, because I don't like to go there. So, 
Anyways, take note of that. Anything else we got going on? Nope, I don't think that's it. So hey, great to have you guys with us. Um, it's time to take up our offering this morning. You can put it in the box. You can mail it in. We have online giving too. DunkirkNazarene.org. You go there, there's a spot there for giving. You can give there. Hey, there's a lot of energy in this place, isn't there, today? I feel the energy. Do you feel it? I feel the Spirit of God just resting on us right now. I'm looking forward to a great, great rest of the service. Kids, get ready. Because you have two songs to do, okay? We're ready. You ready? Yeah. All right, hey, let's pray. Father, we love you, Jesus. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you for children. Thank you for VBS, and thank you for all the wonderful things that you've done, not just in our lives, but through our lives. So, Father, we pray that you bless this offering, bless those that give. And, Father, for those that can't give right now because of financial struggles, bless them too. Father, may your spirit just rest on them, Father, this morning. We love you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.
you would stand with us this morning, we're going to our prayer time right now. And we're going to our prayer time. If you would, um, if you have something on your heart, you just need to lay down at the altar. Maybe, you, maybe you're just struggling this morning. The altars are open this morning. You just come. Maybe you just want to come up and give God praise. That's okay too. The altar is open for that too. I just feel like the altar is a great place to come to connect with God. You can do it right there in your pew. You can, and I get that. But the altar is a special place. It's a special place. But you can have that one-on-one -on -one time, just you and him. So the altar is open this morning. You come as the worship team leads us in this, in this next song.
praying. If you feel like you can step out and go pray with them, that'd be great. We need to be surrounding our friends and our people with prayer, don't we? These are our people. They just need us to pray over them a little bit this morning. Yeah. Father, you are good. And your love endures forever, Father. And Father, we stand here this morning in the presence of the almighty God. Your spirit, Father God, falling on us, Lord Jesus, this morning. Sensing your presence here. What a blessing it is, Father God, to have brothers and sisters in Christ laying hands on others and praying. Father, as I look down at these altars, there are children laying hands on adults praying for them. That's power. That's power. And Father, this morning, we pray for all these requests that are being laid down at these altars right now, Father God. We pray for them. I don't know what they are, but Father, that's just between you and them. You know their hearts this morning. So Father, I minister to them right now where they're at. And Father, for those in the congregation, if you just have a prayer request you'd just like to offer up to God, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Just give it to him this morning. He sees those hands. He sees those hands and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. Amen. Father, you see those hands raised. Father, you work in their lives. Father, you work in those situations. Lord, you are good again. And Father, we are excited about what you're going to do this morning. Father, the cool idea, the cool thought, Father God, is, is the fact that the grave could not hold you. The grave couldn't hold you, Lord. There's power in your presence. There's power, Father. Wherever you're at, there's power. And Lord, the power of prayer is so important, so powerful, Father. We're praying right now, Lord, that you would just minister. You would minister, Father God, to those folks that are needing prayer. And be with our service this morning, Lord. We lift that up to you too. This morning, Father. That you would just be with us, Father God, here in this place. As we break open the word of God, share it, Father God, with those that need, need to hear it, Father God, this morning. And Lord, my brother Nick has asked to be anointed for his friend. So Father, right now, we're going to lay hands on brother Nick, my friend, my, my, my partner in crime, so to speak, my brother. What's your friend's name again? Adam. Adam. So we're going to gather around Nick. Especially you men, come out here. Women, come on, let's go. We're going to lay hands on our brother Nick, and we're going to pray for Adam. Adam's got cancer. Had cancer, I guess it's gone, but there's a lot of other things happening in Adam's life. And guess what? He needs a touch from God. And guess what? You have an opportunity right now to do that for him. So you grab your hands there, brother Nick. I've always wanted to hold your hand, so. <laughs> I love this guy. Father God, we love you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. And Father, we come to you this morning on behalf of this, of, his, of this friend Adam. Lord, I don't know him. I don't have to know him. He's a friend of Nick's, and Nick's a friend of mine, and, and Nick is also a friend of yours. And so, Father God, this morning, I just want to ask right now, Lord Jesus, you'd just be with Adam. They talked about his, you know, had part of his tongue cut off, and, his, and, 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 and Father, some other things. Lord, I don't know the whole story, but you do. You don't need me to explain everything to you, Father God. You know. So, Father, this morning, we come to you believing full well that you will do what you say you will do. Father, for those that love you, Lord Jesus, who are counted according to your purpose, you do great things for us, Father. So, Lord, I just pray right now for Adam. You just go to wherever he's at. May he sense your presence right now, Father God, 
May you sense your presence as we pray right now, Father God. And Father, I don't think Nick would mind if I added Travis to this prayer. Father, and he's having some struggles too in the hospital. So I just be with him too, Father God. I just, just anoint Nick for, for, for Travis too this morning. Father, we just give him up to you. These men, Adam and Travis. We anoint Nick, Father God, in the name of the Father, Son of your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. And it's in your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Love you, buddy. Yeah. Okay. We'll just anoint everybody this morning. What do we got going on? Hey, don't leave yet, guys. Don't leave yet, guys. Okay. Okay, what's her name again? Kathleen Christie. Kathleen Christie Staten. Okay, let me have your hands there, sister. Let's lay hands on Sister Shirley here. Her name is Kathleen Stanley. Staten. Kathleen Staten. Father, we are coming to you again this morning, Father God, praising you and thanking you for who you are. We just lift you up, Father God, this morning. We exalt you in the high place that you deserve. And Father, I just thank you, Father God, for our, my sister Shirley here, Father, that has a heart for her friends. And Father, we just pray for Kathleen this morning. She broke her hip, Father God. There's so many things happening in her life. And Father God, the number one concern for Shirley is her salvation. And Father, that's a great thing to be concerned about. So Father God, we pray, Father God, this morning that you'll send angels to her, Father God, sharing the gospel to her, Jesus, right now. She'll hear your word, Father God, and respond to it. And Father, we pray for her spiritual life. We pray for her physical life too this morning, Lord, that you would just touch her physically. Father, that you would just lay your hands on her, Father God, that she would just sense your presence right now in that room, Father, wherever she's at. That she would sense your presence this morning. And Father, that she would be overwhelmed by you. That's a good prayer. That she would be overwhelmed by you, Lord, this morning. Father God, so we anoint Shirley in the name of the Father, and the Son, and your precious Holy Spirit. Go to Kathleen right now, Father God, wherever she's at. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you, sweetheart. Man. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else need to be anointed? <laughs> Thanks. Hi, buddy. How are you? Good. Well, are you guys ready for this? <laughs> Have you felt like you've been in church this morning? Yeah. Amen. Woo. My goodness gracious. Well, get ready to not feel that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Kids, come up. Come on. Where are my kids? Let's go. Yes, Casey, that means you too. You're a kid. All my VBS kids, come up here. Before they sing, I did want to tell you that um, a quick camp announcement. I had 95 first, second, and third graders at camp. And at least 70 of them either made a first-time commitment or got some kind of help at camp. And at Bible school, we averaged 30 to 40 kids. And uh, Monday night, we had an altar call, and we had 20 kids come down, either for a first-time commitment or a recommitment for Christ. And then our offering project this year, um, we were working on buying a bicycle for um, one of the kids and then one of the teenagers that lives in Columbia because they have a harder or an easier chance of getting um, kidnapped and things for sex trafficking with their walking so we wanted to get a bike. So we were working on getting one big one and one little one. Well, God blessed because we were able to get three little ones and one big one, so double what we wanted. So I just thank God he does it every year. Whatever our goal is, he doubles it every time. So. So here they are. And we all have a 
I say for the last 10 years, Gloria keeps asking me to do the music, and I said, I'm getting too old, Gloria, but I just love it. And I said, uh, thank you, Lord. So the songs we picked out, one of them's really loud, and we hope you'll just enjoy it. But they, when you see them sing and praising God, it just does my heart good. So thank you for sending them. We love them. And here's what we learned this week, part of it. Yeah, we'll do that one too. Get a smile on 
your face, saved by grace. Somebody better help me give the Lord some praise. We love, we love Jesus. Sing it, come on. We love, we love Jesus. We love, we love Jesus. We love, we love Jesus. Anywhere yet? Wait. Hold on, kids. Don't go anywhere You're saved by grace. It's time we all lift our voice and praise, saying we love, we love Jesus. We love, we love Jesus. Jesus died for everyone, anyone, whosoever will can receive his love today. Have your sins erased, receive his grace. Wave your hands all over the place, saying we love. We love Jesus. We love, we love Jesus. Whether you're an old man, poor man, give him your life. You will live in heaven someday. Get a smile on your face, saved by grace. Somebody better help me give the Lord some praise. We love, we love Jesus. Sing it, come on. Good job, buddy. You guys are all dismissed for Children's Church. Go with Pastor Gloria. Go in your grace and mercies and just go with her. If you didn't like that, you can yell at me later. Isn't it fun sometimes to act like, act like a kid? Yeah? If you ask Sheila, she'll tell you it happens often at my house with me. So, all right, now everybody has to be honest with me at this point. How many of you are singing the other version? <laughs> Anybody going through your mind, the other version? Yeah? <laughs> Tyra, at least you're honest. Yeah, at least you're honest. Oh my goodness. We're wrapping up our four-week series on being a chameleon. And this morning, we're going to be talking about imitating Christ. 
And how important that is for us to understand that we have to be like him. We have to be like him, amen? We have got to be like him. Because if we're not like him, that means we're like the world and that is unacceptable. The only imitation we'd be striving for in our lives is to imitate Jesus. This means we look like him and how he loves others. This love was, it was unbelievable to those on the receiving end. This love was an unconditional and not based on performance. This love was self-sacrifice and not selfish. The only urge we should give is the urge to be more like him. Father, help me to understand the love that you have for me and the rest of your people. And once I understand it, allow me to learn how to show it to those around me by the way I act and speak. In your name we pray. Amen. As we draw this series to a close, and it's kind of sad that it's closing, because I've really enjoyed this sermon series. I don't know if you've enjoyed this, but I've really enjoyed this series. This, you know, by striving, it's, I'm sorry, let me go back down here. It's been one of the most powerful forces this morning. We're going to be talking about the most powerful force. If not the most powerful force in the universe, it's this, cause this idea of love. This idea of love. Probably the most powerful force in the universe is this idea of love, isn't it? You agree with that this morning? That love is a powerful force? And believers and followers of Christ, we're called to imitate Christ. And this includes learning to love like he loved. Learning to love like he loves. Amen? Becoming more like him means learning how to look at others and say, you know what? In spite of everything you are and everything you've ever done to me, you hurt my feelings, all this other stuff, I still love you. Because I'm telling you right now, folks, None of your friends have ever hung you on a cross. Right? And that's how far his love reached. That's how far his love reached. Oscar Wilde said this, Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. That, me that mediocrity can pay to greatness. Which you have probably heard before when someone says something like, Imitation is the high highest form of admiration. In any event, who better to imitate than Christ, amen? Who better to imitate than Jesus himself? Who better to model your life around, your pattern your day after, and conform your image into other than Jesus? What a better thing you could do. Christ is our most precious example of righteous living. And the truth is, Standing out for Christ must include the most important aspect of his ministry, and that was love. And that was love. You'll find all these notes in your, in, in your uh, bulletin. They're in there. If you have one. Love is the reason Jesus came. Did you know that? Love is the reason Jesus came. If you look at John 3, 16, what does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gave his one and only son... That was the greatest vision of love. Then John 5, 15, 13 says this, Love was the reason Jesus traded his love for ours. Greater love had no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. In Ephesians chapter 5, 1 and 2, I'll give you a moment to find that in your Bible or on your phone, whatever you use. Turn with me there to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at two simple verses tonight today. The first two, in fact, this is once again the Apostle Paul writing, and here's what it has to say. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says this, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in, I love this verse, and walk in love. It tells us to walk in love, to be love, where you go, where you do, what you're, where, where, where you're at, who you're with. Just be love. I know it's not like I'm preaching from the 60s, doesn't it? When we were, all, we were all about love. But you know, here's the thing. We have to love. If we're going to be followers of Christ, we have to love. As Christ loved us, 
love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering of sacrifice to God. Paul calls us to imitate God. He calls us to imitate God by the way we love. Imitate God by the way we love. Do we do that this morning? This sounds simple, and it is. But the reality is we tend to get in our own way sometimes in the process, don't we? Because we seem to distort what God's love really actually looks like in action. We tend to mold it, mold it into what the world defines as love. Which is a far cry from the definition of true, God, love, true love of God. So today we close out this fantastic sermon series, Standing Out for Christ. Let's look at three key aspects of God's love that cannot be missed. But must be imp 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 I'm sorry, implemented and imitated in our lives. The first thing is, God's love is unconditional. Isn't that great to know? That God's love is unconditional? There's nothing you can do, it says in, in, in Romans chapter 12, that there's nothing that you can do to separate yourself from God's love. Nothing. He loves you in spite of you. How about that? He loves me in spite of me. He loves us in the midst of our sin. He loves us in our sanctified life. He loves us, period. How about that? It is a father's love. It is a father's love. And I understand what that means, being a daddy. I understand what that means. And I tried to, I've tried to wrap my mind around the idea. Wrap my mind around the idea that God loves me more than I even love my own children. Because I love my children. But God loves me even more than that. Then I become a grandpa, and I figured out that love. Oh my gosh. That's a whole different kind of love, isn't it? That's a whole different kind of love. That's like your kids are here, and the grandpa love is like way up here. It's like out of this world kind of love. And I try to understand that, how God could love me more than even that. Right? But he does. His love is unconditional. There are no barriers or borders to his love. But now this. Hear me this. Just because he loves you doesn't mean that he accepts your sin. Just because I love my children don't mean I, I enjoy and appreciate the things that they do. You can still be living lost and God will still love you. It's not until you come into that relationship with him where he no longer looks upon your, your sin. That relationship. Make that clear here this morning. You have to give your life to Christ. Again, there wasn't anything that we did to earn love and favor of God. In fact, Based upon previous centuries of human history, it would seem likely God would know better than to send his most precious gift. However, that is exactly what he did to motivate, and his motivation was love. Not just any love, but agape love, the highest form of love referenced in the New Testament. Agape is one of several Greek words of love, and when the word agape is used in the Bible, it refers to a pure, willful, sacrificial love that intentionally desires another's highest good. God's love is intentional. His love is intentional. It's sacrificial. And it's powerful. That's what his love is. It's intentional, sacrificial, and powerful. The topic of love reminds me of this short illustration. The college man. Walked into, into a photo, 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 photography studio with a framed picture of his girlfriend. He wanted the picture duplicated. This involved removing it from the frame. In doing all this, the studio owner noticed the inscription on the back of the photograph. It said, my dearest Tom, not me, I love you with all of my heart. I love you more and more each day. I will love you forever and ever. And I am yours for all eternity. And it was signed, Helen. And it contained a P.S. If we ever break up, I want this picture back. <laughs> Hell 
them was obviously dealing with a lowercase love, right? It wasn't that unconditional love. It was a lowercase love. It was, wasn't that sacrificial love that we talked about. Helen's love had conditions attached to it. It had conditions attached to it, right? It comes with strings attached, addendums and revisions, and it changed based upon feelings, outcomes, weather patterns, or anything else disrupting it. But this is not the way God loves. His love is a commitment that never changes. This is why we can trust His love. We know it'll be the same tomorrow, right? It'll be the same love the next day. It'll be the same love that He has for us next month. It'll be the same love he has for us next year. His love never changes because he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he doesn't change. He's not like the shifting sand when the wind blows. He's not like that. You ever wonder how he could love you? You ever wonder how in the world God could love me? And you can write down, you can write down every single thing that you've ever done in your life. You can write down every single thing you've ever done in your life. And you might have a list of 100 and maybe 200 things. But when you write Jesus across them, they get canceled out. Because his love, once you give your life to Christ, that love that he has for you no longer sees those things. It's like they are from the east, is from the west. He forgets them. Aren't you glad this morning he forgets our, our sins? He forgets our shortcomings? Aren't you glad this morning? I know I am. I know I am. I'm glad that, that, that he has that short-term memory when it comes to me and my relationship with him. Here's the next thing. So when you have felt the unconditional love, have you, when have you felt the unconditional love in your life? When have you felt that? When have you felt that? As you think about those moments... Or relationships, how do you think that could extend the kind of love to others? I think God's love is unconventional. Aren't you glad that his love is unconventional? It's not like everybody else's love. It isn't. As your pastor, I tell you I love you and I mean it. I do love you. As your pastor, you are my friend. I love you. you I've been around you for 12 years. I've learned to put up with you. Most of you anyways. I've gotten better about it. <laughs> Just kidding. Kind of. Anyways, you know, but you know, that's the thing. That's the thing. My love is not an unconventional love. I love you as you're my brothers and you're my sisters, but God's love is unconventional. When Jesus ministered on earth, he was constantly extending compassion, mercy, and love to those whom others passed over. Jesus loved those with, with culture had defined, I'm sorry, has deemed unlovable, unclean, and undeserving. The woman at the well was one of them, right? Zacchaeus, the tax collector, was another. The woman that flowed with blood was another. The invalid at the pool of Bethsaida was another. The thief hanging on the cross next to him was another. The Jews who crucified him, he still loved them. His love was unconventional because he loved them in spite of themselves. A lot of times our kind of love has conditions to them, don't they? We have, we have these conditions and, and we, we, some people are harder to love than others. Maybe you look up at the pulpit and you go, Pastor, I mean, you're not really easy to love either sometimes. And that might be true. But God's love is unconventional. He loves us in spite of ourselves. He loves us because of, because of his love that he has for us on the cross. When you see Jesus... We see Jesus' compassion, mercy, and love in all these stories and countless others throughout the gospel. And these are just the ones recorded. There must have been other countless ways and others who received that unconventional love and unconditional love of Christ. Because he's always willing to step out of the social and cultural norms to reach someone else. The chorus of a popular song from the 90s called Crazy says, but we're never, we never going to survive unless we get a little crazy. Now, I'm not saying we're going to die, but I'm saying in order to love unconventionally, we're going to have to think outside the box at times that may just look crazy to others. 
God's love is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable what the love of God can do in a person's life. Think about, think about your life before you came to Christ. Think about your life before you got saved. Think about your life before Jesus knocked on your door and said, Hey, wake up. It's time to come follow me. Think about your life. Truth be told, if you've been a follower of Christ for a long, for a long enough time, you have definitely heard or read the unbelievable testimonies of some responding to the love of God. Think about testimonies you've heard. Think about things that people have said in their testimonies about the love of God. How it rescued them from darkness. How it pulled them out of the miry clay. How it rescued them when they were drowning, and like, like, like Peter. You know? Think about all those testimonies you've heard in your life that was a testimony of how God rescued somebody from, from the, the brink of death. Only because of his love that he had for, has for us and has for them. Think about it. For a person who had spent their entire life working harder and harder to earn the, to earn the favor, the unconditional of whatever God or, of, or, whatever God or religion they are following... For that person they hear they are unconditionally loved is unbelievable. It's astounding and shocking and world rocking. And then the beautiful twist of Christianity is this. In response to the unbelievable love of God, we are called to place our beliefs in the one who traded his life for ours. We are called to believe in the sacrificial love of Christ. The same Christ who said, Greater love hath no man than this. That someone lay down his life for his friend. Greater love no one. So do you have a friend you could trade your life for? Do you have people in mind who need to receive the unbelievable love of God? Would you be willing to be an ambassador like we talked about last week? Would you be willing to be an ambassador who represents the kingdom of, of love? An ambassador who represents the kingdom of Christ? Somebody who stands up and, and, and is counted? Somebody who stands up and says, I am a follower of Jesus, and I love you, and he loves you too. Are you willing to imitate Christ this morning? Are you willing to imitate Christ this morning to stand out rather than fitting in? We all like to fit in, don't we? We all like to just blend into the woodwork. And some of you are like that, aren't you? Some of you are to the point of your life where you just like to blend. You like to just fit in. You like to just sit in your pew. And maybe you even wear the same color of the pew so nobody sees you. But I think Christ is saying this morning, not enough anymore. You need to stand up. We need to be counted for the cause of Christ. Amen? We need to be counted for the cause of Christ. And he be sharing his love with others. John 13, 35 says, this, By this, everyone know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. It's unbelievable what the love of God can do in a person's life, isn't it? It's unbelievable. The redemption, reconciliation, and renewal. We already went through all that. And wrap this up again. By, the, by the, this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Loving others is such a shock to the world. And by doing so, people will know you are a disciple of Christ by just loving people. Somebody hurts you, love them anyways. Somebody steps on your toes, love them anyways. Somebody says something negative, love them anyways. Hate is of the devil, I'm telling you. You had better find a way in your heart and in your spirit to love. To just love. Over and over again in my mind as I was putting this together and, and reading this and, and do, doing all this stuff, you know, I was thinking about all those people who have hurt me in the past. You ever do that? You ever stop down and think, you know what? 
I remember that person. I remember that what happened in that situation. I remember that. I remember that. And they were just coming to my mind. And they, you know, how, the funny thing is they come like this, don't they? And here I thought I forgave every one of that stuff. I thought I already put that behind me. All of a sudden it just keeps coming to my mind. And God just talked to me. And he said, you need to put that behind you again. You're allowing the devil to bring that to your mind. Stop it. Stop it. So I had to actually, I had to ask for forgiveness again, and, and I forgave them. Again, not like to their face, but in my mind, because I already forgave them to their face. For some reason, I held on to that. You ever do that? You say, I forgive you, but you hold on to it with a vice grip, right? Like a vice grip. Let go of it. Let go of it. Love others. Okay, or at the very least, you'll know that you, that you ascribe to the principles and characteristics of, the different, of a different kingdom. Another way to look at it is to say this. If you love others, you'll stand out. If you love others, you'll stand out. If you love others, you will stand out. Right? If people see that you love them unconditionally you will stand out. I think that's true. This morning, as we wrap up this message, Tyler, you can come up, buddy. Bring the rest of the guys with you, would you? Thanks. We're going to wrap up our sermon this morning, this, this sermon series this morning. We're singing a very, very amazing song. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay up here, buddy. I'll stay up here with you. So. <laughs> He's actually asked me to sing with him, believe that or not. Yep. <laughs> and uh, we're going to sing this song. And what I want you to do, if you're willing to stand up and stand out and love like Jesus loves, as we sing this song, I just want you to stand. Not yet. Not till the song starts. Hold on. Margaret will be the first one up because she always does. She <laughs> loves that way. If you're willing to just say, you know what, I'm going to stand out. I'm going to stand out. I'm going to love like Jesus loves. I'm going to be different. You just stand where you're at this morning as we sing this song. Surrender.
Father, we love you this morning, Jesus. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us the way that you do, with that unconditional love, Father. This morning, Father God, I ask right now that you minister to our hearts as we leave this place. Father, may we not leave church in this building. May we take church and take it out of, the, out of our community with us and show the love of Christ that you have for us and show it to others this morning. We love you, Jesus, so much. Now, Father God, as we leave this place, may you dismiss us with your love, your mercy, and your grace. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. God bless.